Okay, it's been a minute since I've done a video on the golf, so I wanted to show you guys the next project and try to document this a little bit as we go. Um, let me turn the camera around and show you what the plan is. So, I think the last time I actually did a former video, it didn't even have the livery on it. So, if you've seen the photos or some other track day photos uh, and videos out there, uh, I did get a livery on it by RV uh, Wraps, which is pretty cool. Made the car feel a little bit more legit, but I've always still had the same issues with wheel bearings and brakes. So I'm starting the completion of something from two years ago almost now, uh, which is an Audi TT uh, TTS hub, like a 2010, 2011, which has a different roll center than like a Mark 7 Golf. Uh, and then some custom made control arms, which is what originally prompted this because we kept breaking these. Uh, I've got to figure out something for the steering but this is 5x112, and the best part about it is I do get to go with a bigger brake package. So these are the smallest brakes I could find, still in two-piece, but of course I can go up uh, to pretty much anything um, anything that I want. These are some Boxster-esque calipers uh, with a very simple adapter. I might change these out, I don't know. I did get some custom drive shafts from Drive Shaft Shop, uh, but that's all that's been really done. And <clears throat> so this should fix my uh, hub problem as well as my brake problem. I keep blowing out both and that prompted a, f a change from 5x100 to 5x112 in the front which is what I want to do in the rear. Now I could have done some adapters and things like that probably gotten by and who knows that might have been the smartest move after all but we'll see how this thing <laughs> works out. Um, so anyway in making this front suspension change I said well if I could ever find the correct uh, rear uh, the correct rear subframe with 5x112, I would do it. And this was a Mark 7, uh, 2020 Mark 7 Golf GTI rear subframe. And if you know, this comes by 5x112, and it has bigger brakes, and it's multi link, so I can now, you know, play with toe and camber, uh, which I could not really do very easily on the torsion beam in the stock car. Now, a couple problems obviously, this is a much wider subframe, uh, even with all factory, it's just, it's, it's very, very wide, so. My backup plan is to cut this in half and take these two uh, control arm points and bring them close together. I think I could take four inches out of the width. However, if uh, I can get it in without having to make that modification, that's great because then all this, <clears throat> all the factory stuff still works, right? This is uh, mainly the, um, the, the rear sway bar. So aftermarket options just begin to open up and, and make things a little bit simpler. But this isn't a direct swap, I'm going from a 1991 chassis to a 2020 Mark 7. So <clears throat> I've started to cut this thing, or take this thing apart so I could prep for the cutting. Uh, this is the torsion beam, it's just kind of hanging out here for, for right now. Um, but I wanted to do a video before I started cutting and do a bit of an intro. So here's to that. We'll see what happens. Kind of excited. Um, Having a more complex rear end, I really think is going to help the rear stability of the car and also give just me just give me more tuning options on track. So it's all good things. Believe it or not, that that torsion beam weighs very close to the same as that multi-link over there. So I don't think I'm adding much weight. If anything, I'm going to be reducing weight. I'm going to be getting rid of the factory fuel tank for sure, uh, which I've had some as the grip has increased. Um, I've had some fuel starvation issues at VIR and I'm only doing about 1.1 to 1.2 G right now and I know I can go a lot higher especially with the addition of aero. This is also going to allow me to run more of a flat floor I believe. I'm going to try to route the exhaust in a couple different ways um, but anyway I can shift some more weight to the back by putting a fuel cell in the very very back. Uh, I can actually lengthen the wheelbase a little bit which I'm thinking about doing adding a baby an inch to two inches for stability on the higher speed tracks. And so, you know, tuning options just go wild, right? Uh, when you talk about a complete change like this. Um, now, as far as cutting, my plan right now is to pretty much come in here and, you know, this this indicates roughly where that first pickup point on the suspension needs to go. So just on the other side of the sheet metal right here. I believe I can pretty much just cut everything here that isn't part of the wrap, including following this line right here, maybe a little higher than this line actually, and just buzz it all the way around. So there's that too. Um, it should just be a shell. The rear bars in the, on the cage, that's going to go away. I'm pretty much going to tie everything like a tube chassis directly to the back of the main hoop of the roll cage. So that means the front and the rear 
have then been both tube chassis um, and then it's just a matter of time right before I come in here and I just buzz all this out and put a flat floor in it and make it proper um, but one step at a time so we start with the front that prompted change for the rear we're gonna cut the rear out see what happens and then hopefully get to play with arrow and a few other things so yeah follow along <laughs> see what happens all right so <clears throat> it didn't take but a few minutes to knock out the, the fuel tank and the rear suspension. It's all pretty simple stuff. A couple bolts. <clears throat> Let me zoom out here a little bit. Um, the chassis, this, this car's always been kind of clean because I kind of got it before I assume a lot of the rust started to really take place. Um, it does give me an opportunity to cut out a little bit of rot here that I tried patching back when I first got the car in 2011. So, but, you know, who cares at this point? It doesn't really matter. Um, let's take a look at the two subframes and <clears throat> kind of compare them. So just briefly, um, I'm going to tape measure real quick. I forget what width that wing is. Let's see here. <clears throat> this is a nine lives wing for um, a C5 vet. 71 inches, so this is like a full width wing, I think. Uh, <clears throat> the, we're gonna do this one handed. This is front sway bar out of the way. So I'm gonna go to where the, where the outside of the hub is without the brakes and everything. Just give myself a consistent point of reference, but something like there to there. So it's like 61 inches, just the inside of the hub to the inside of the hub, you know, something like that. If I bring it over here, uh, bring it over here to the Mark III setup. <clears throat> Let me see here, something like that to here. It's actually not that far off. It's 60. Wait, so it's only an inch? Dude. <clears throat> For some reason, it looks so much wider. I mean, I do have 10 mil spacers on here. But it looks... It looks so much wider than it is. That's amazing. Um... Yeah, let me just double check. This doesn't seem right. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed that it's only an inch different. Okay, there's that. Two here. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's 60 inches. It's five feet. Oh, it's cheap tape measure. Oh, let me get a little closer here. Watching me struggle with a tape measure. This is how you know the project's gonna go really well. Alright, look at this. What is it right here? Okay. I'm gonna say 62, 62 and a half, but that's still remarkable, right? That's a two and a half inch difference only. Neither one of them have brakes. Uh, I'm sorry, that one does have brakes and spacers. So it's probably closer to a three inch difference. But, uh, wow, okay. I can work with that. Um, I'm going to be running different offset wheels and bigger wheels and everything else anyways. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook this thing up on a transmission jack and uh, stick it in the air. And probably that's it for the night because I want to sleep on it and just come up with any other ideas um, on how to mount this thing. And we'll go from there. But yeah. Cool. All right. What do you think, dog? Yeah, you've been playing and everything. Okay. All right, let's huck this thing up. All right, I think I figured it out. Well, we'll see. We'll sleep on it. So I've got it positioned to where I've added maybe two inches at most to the wheelbase. <clears throat> and again, that was more for stability on track. Um, it does move the weight balance more to the front. You know, I guess I could go the other way and move more weight balance to the back, but quite honestly, um, I think I think it could do a little I think I could have a little bit more wheelbase and it'd be a bit more stable so 
<clears throat> I did that so roughly in this area. Um, this is a structural part of the car. This is where the old subframe mounted. But it looks to me I should be able to cut this straight across the chassis and box it in and tube it. And this will be the starting point. This is the first pickup point. And I've got this guy with a 5.8 bolt sitting in that. So that's got to go in. And these back here. And then there's this small little tab that bolts. So the whole subframe needs to go up, I think, about 6 or 7 inches. Um, which puts the top of an 18 inch wheel with about 3 inches of bump maybe a little bit more just to the body seam right there. So if you could imagine, I'm gonna follow this green line, I'm gonna come up and just kind of come back down to this OE spot here. Um, I think that's probably one of the better looking ways to do it. I did measure the front, you know, inside the hub, inside the hub, it's about 63 and a half to 64. This we measured, I think it was just 62 and a half is what I said. So we're pretty close and much better than before, um, which would help with turn in, I believe. Uh, and add a bunch of rear stability. But uh, I'm not seeing anything that's a deal breaker. You know, the, the suspension, instead of being here on the twist beam, it's it's more rearward. rearward. Um, so, but this whole area is going to go away anyways. I'm hoping to use just like a factory uh, Mark 7 front suspension and rear at this point because the Audi TT stuff is interchangeable with the uh, the Mark 7 GTI and, and whatnot. So, all good things. I think it's gonna work. It's just a matter of getting here now and spending the next evening uh, just chopping stuff up. So again, I'm, I'm gonna stop here tonight. I might just upload this entire introduction thing um, as one video, just so you guys can kind of follow along, follow the process. But uh, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow I'm in here with a plasma cutter and uh, it's gonna weigh a lot less. So yeah, good stuff. And you know the best part about this, I have all these sweet five lug swaps. Of, you know, I've got. <clears throat> the Mark III original control arms and hubs and wheelwood brake kit with actually those right there that are still connected up. I've got all of that. Uh, I've got another set of axles. So if I found a clean Mark II Golf, you know, in reality, I could just swap everything over since it's bolt on um, and just make some motor mounts and have a K20 Golf again. So ideas, ideas. Maybe a his and hers build. That would be cool. My wife loves this drive. Uh, sorry, my wife loves driving this car. So it'd be nice to have two of them sometimes. Be fun. Anyway, all right. Good night. I'm going to get some food. See ya.